Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Super Agents Live. Hey, for all of you guys, thanks for tuning in. My name's Toby Salgado. What we do on the show is we talk about real estate. We talk about how to grow your business. Um, today, we're having kind of a different show. On Wednesdays, I do a solo show. Before I get into the content of what today's show is going to be about, I want to bring up a couple things. Uh, for all of you that uh, are listeners, if you're new, hey, thanks for thanks for showing up. I'm glad you found it, and uh, hopefully you get some value out of this. Um, we have a hashtag for the show. It's, it is hashtag unpack that idea. Now, when you tweet out, when you listen to this episode, find a nugget you like uh, and tweet it out using that hashtag. And, uh, and look, that's we're starting a big follow train. I'll follow you. Everybody else in the audience, uh, I, I suggest we all follow one another. And look, you know, I mean, we're all here together. We're all doing this together, building our businesses. Uh, and um, we want to support one another. Uh, speaking of support, um, we want to win. Uh, Inman.com uh, has a, they do a contest or whatever, you know, they nominate one thing uh, as the most innovative app. Uh, for 2014, we want to be nominated. Uh, we only have another couple of weeks to be nominated and uh, hopefully we will win. So, uh, you can go to the show notes and, uh, uh, go to the show notes and you just, there's an orange button. You say click, or I'm sorry, read more. Uh, it'll pop up and I will have a button there. All you have to do is press that button, uh, press that button and uh, scroll down to number 10 and nominate the show. Um, what do you, why would you do that? Well, hopefully you like the show. Hopefully, man, you get so much value out of this. You're willing to take five minutes out of your busy day. Uh, because dude, I take a lot of time to these freaking shows, man. Uh, anyhow, sorry. Um, uh, so nominate the show. Um, what you will get is we have a big mastermind. Now this mastermind costs 147 bucks, which is dirt cheap dirt cheap. I have some other friends out here who have some masterminds and they charge 500 bucks a month. I'm sorry. You know, it is a quarter. So we're just charging 147 bucks a quarter. Now, here's what I will do. If you nominate the show, take a screenshot, send it to me at Toby, T-O-B-Y at Super Agents Live. I will get you in. I will give you, I'll let you experience that for a quarter of the year for free, three months. And uh, <clears throat> look, a lot can happen in three months. Now, I'm going to tell you some stuff that happened to me uh, the last week, and I'm only going to tell you because it is an introduction into this content <clears throat> for the show. Now, I'll tell you two, two kind of cool things happened. Um, one is uh, last week I was interviewed uh, by Yahoo. Now, Yahoo, Yahoo, right? They are doing a giant feature on, uh, you know, somebody who's been successful in real estate. Um, so they found me and uh, I just did a 20 minute interview and uh, they're actually uh, by the end of this week, they're going to be done. I don't know how many people they're interviewing, but I my, my sense is it, there's there's, you know, I don't know, 20 people that they're going to interview. Right. So I made the cut to the top 20 or maybe top 10. I'm not sure. Um, but if I get featured, uh, it is going to be great for the show and great for my personal brand. They are going to fly uh, the winner or the, the person they're going to feature uh, out to New York. And we're going to do an in-studio, like on-camera, big feature for Yahoo. So uh, cross your fingers and, uh, and send me some love because I would love to do that. That would be really cool. Um, the other thing that I did. Uh, is uh, I threw my hat into the ring. There's a there's a for a TV show. There's a TV show, and um, they're looking for a host. And it's it's uh, they're looking for a host. They, they actually want somebody to be kind of gnarly. Like it's a show about you know new buyers, and uh, they want houses they can't afford, so they need a host that can just kind of kind of get on those people. So look, I can do that. Um, so I hit, just threw my hat into the ring. Now, now why is that important? Why did I tell you that? Just to say I was cool. 
Kind of. No. Um, it's because of this. I, they found me. Yahoo found me. Uh, this show uh, found me because of, because of this show. When I say that, I'm sorry, the, the TV show. So this, this, this podcast, I, this, you know, this blog, I am, I'm creating content and I'm pushing it out to the world. And people are listening. People are hearing it. And because I have this platform, because, you know, I'm not afraid to get my stuff out there, uh, I'm getting some exposure. Okay. I'm telling you this because those things would have never happened without the blog uh, and the podcast. Now, for you, and look, that's what the show today is about. It's about your blog. I know it's dry. I know it's not that exciting on, on the front Stick with me, and hopefully, I'm going to convince you that that you should be updating your blog more, right? So, almost all of you out there, you have a blog tab on your website, but almost all of you out there never do anything with that. Now, I've been on thousands of of real estate websites, literally thousands, and um and the blogs are terrible, man. Like you know, it's they're not updated, like they're not there, or the last time they were updated was like, you know, three months ago. And uh, you know, I mean, look, if I was buying a house and I was looking at you to list my house, that doesn't for me, like you know, I'm like, I, you know, who is this person? Are they a part time person, or you know, why do they have this blog but they don't do anything with it? That doesn't create, uh, you know, if, if you're not going to do anything with it, just just erase it, right? Just get rid of the tab. Um, but you should. You should keep that up. You should keep your blog up to date with relevant, tasty material. Now, why don't you keep it up, right? Why don't you do anything with it? Well, you know, look, the most common one is that you think nobody's reading it, right? Or, you know, another common one is you don't know what to say or because you don't think anybody's reading, you think it's a waste of time. And I'll tell you, I will absolutely tell you, yeah, nobody's reading your blog. And they're not reading it because it's not consistent. I mean, imagine this show, right? I mean, I, I do a pretty good job of putting out three shows a week. And again, th it takes, this is a, uh, this is a full-time gig for me, right? I do, I've been doing this for seven months and it, it literally takes uh, it's a full time to pop out three hours of of great content. Now, <clears throat> it's worth it for me just because, you know, just like I said, right. Yahoo fan me, you know, this TV show fan me. Um, so anyhow, so I, I we're going to I'm going to tell you I'm going to hopefully convince you why you should stay on top of your blog. Now, listen, if you don't know what to say, um, <clears throat> Uh, I see the other thing, you know, people don't know what to say on their blog, but they're trying to update it and they just out, they just drop crappy posts like, Hey, new listing three, two for $500,000 or whatever. Um, it, you know, it, so, Oh, let's move on. Okay. <clears throat> let's, let's go get it. And look, you know, for you guys, you know, if I didn't have this blog, like I said, or, or this podcast, you know, would I, you know, I mean, because I do, I might get a TV show or I might get a giant feature on Yahoo. What about you? Have you got any press from your little, you know, uh, uh, what are they even called? Newspapers, right? Um, have you gotten any, uh, press? If you haven't, it's because you're not out there enough. You need to get out there more. Okay, so now I'm going to try. I'm hoping to convince you of the power of blogging in this episode and not how it can just get you exposure, but how it can get you leads, right? Because everything's about leads. So so let me, I'm going to remind you, and and I hope you got, I hope the whoever, for those of you who are still sticking with me and you think that this blog stuff is is worth spending a little time listening to me talk about it. I appreciate it because I, I know that I probably lost 10% of my audience in the last, I've been on air eight minutes. I probably lost 10% of you. For the remaining 90% or 60% or whoever else is out there, uh, let me remind you why you should be blogging. Number one, it builds your brand on the internet. So we know that across the board, all age groups, whether you're 19 or 90, all age groups begin their home search by using the internet, right? Our buyers are, are there, our sellers are there. How come you're not? Okay, number two, for your list, you know, your, and your sphere of influence, a well-kept blog 
will keep you top of mind when either they think about selling or, uh, you know, their, their, their buddy, you know, at work or their neighbor says, hey, you know, do you know a real estate agent? And number three, I need a drink of water real quick. Number three, you can use your blog if it's well done as a resource library, right? So imagine for a second, right? And, and this is, again, if you don't know what to write about, this is something you can write about. So imagine that you wrote a quick blog post about the, ki- uh, the, about the questions that you get asked most often, right? When people ask you those things again and again, uh, uh, you probably just go, hey, that's a good thing to write about. And then when you get asked it the next time, you could just point them to your blog. Or, you know what, look, if they're already clients of yours, you know, they may never ask you that question because they learned it from you and your blog already. All right, number four, uh, it will build credibility for your personal brand. It, it, will, it will establish you, it has the ability to establish you as that expert, right? So if you're pitching yourself, uh, right, and well, so look, if you're pitching yourself as the downtown condo expert, and I find your blog, and I see that you have tons of interesting posts about downtown San Diego, because I'm in San Diego, that's going to carry a lot of weight with me. Now, look, here's an add-on benefit of doing just that. Doing a blog or a podcast, again, I said it earlier, it's a ton of work, mainly because it's like a job, right? You know, I mean, not uh, for me, I get no pleasure. It's a chore to write a blog post. I don't like doing it, but I know I have to. Some people love to write. And for you guys, you know, good for you. Um, but for me, I have to sit down and I have to make sure that I deliver three episodes a week. So, so imagine for you, right, for you and your own blog. Imagine if you wanted to do the same. You wanted to deliver three great b- blog posts per week. <clears throat> and by the way, I know uh, some bloggers. This is incredible. Um, and you have to have some dedication. But for this, for what I'm about to say, some people the really popular bloggers, uh, they literally, they will put 30 hours of work into a single blog post. I can't even imagine that. Um, it, it better that, that if I put 30 hours into something, it better be like pooping gold. Uh, I, but some people do that. So, so for you, um, so let's say that you, you know, let's say you have to sit down, you have to in front of your computer, your laptop, your tablet, you know, number one, you have to find stuff you want to write about, right? Um, if it's not off the top of your head. So you have to go find it. So that does a couple of things. Number one, right? Imagine you are that downtown condo expert guy, and that's what you're pitching. So you are going to try to find interesting stuff to write about, about downtown condos. So you sit down in front of your computer. Um, you're going to go over a ton of information. That makes you, one, you're going to be more well-informed than, than the next guy. Number one, which is kind of cool, right? I mean, that establishes you, uh, it, you know, that actually helps you uh, in, in establishing yourself as that expert in the area that you're writing about. Um, and also, you know, look, you know, here's the other sort of add on, right? Your, your writing is going to get better. You know, your ability to, to pitch will, will get better. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Uh, the, as I said earlier, uh, the thing that stops most bloggers or writers or whatever, what, what hangs them up is not having content, right? You know, people get stuck on what to write about. So for now for you, hopefully, hopefully you have some sort of niche, right? We've heard over and over again, niche down. Now that could be, that niche could be either, Hey, listen, my niche is millennials marketing to millennials. My niche is downtown condos. Uh, my niche is beachfront property, whatever it is. If you have a niche, you should be able to find a lot of stuff to write about. Uh, if not, you know, you, there's there's a lots of general things you could write about, right? I mean, you could write about, uh, you know, first time home buyer tips, uh, financing a new home, how to baby proof your home, uh, what to know about remodeling, how to choose a painting contractor, t- a ton of stuff. Um, so, as I said earlier, maybe you're not a good writer. Uh, and, and, you know, writing's a skill, but that's okay. That's okay. If you're not a good writer, you can still have a great blog and there are lots of great bloggers who don't write anything. And if you're asking, how am I supposed to have a blog, but not write anything? 
It's something called content curation, where you go out, you find articles, you find things that other people have written, and uh, and you know you can link to them in your you know you could write a few, you, have, well, you have to write a few sentences, but you can say hey listen you know all about first time home buyers and, and point them to an Inman dot com or Zillow. there's there's lots of places where you can source content, you can go out and curate content. Now, if you want to do some content curation, I will warn you, you can't just go out. And copy and paste something Bonnie Blogger went out and wrote, right? That's Bonnie Blogger stuff. There's copyright issues, uh, and so uh, look, nobody wants to get in trouble. Um, and if you if if you want to dig into content curation, just you know, just do a Google search. You know, Google content curation. Do Google content curation primer, and uh, and there's lots of stuff uh, out there. Because t- to be honest with you, most people are not content makers, creators. Most people are a blend of content creation and content curation. Um, all right. Another benefit of putting the work, and it is work, into your blog. Now, most of my blog notes uh, or show notes, right? So that's, that's where my blog is, right? I do a show, uh, you know, I interview somebody, I interview Tom Ferry, Grant Cardone, whatever, you know, I have to go listen to it again and, and write out the, you know, get the kind of topical, salient, good points and put them down on paper. So most of my blogs, most of my posts are between 400 uh, and 900 words. And by the way, so far, this post is about 836 words. So uh, I've been talking now for 16 minutes, and so it took me 16 minutes to say just under a thousand words. Um, but so imagine uh, you have uh, you have copy; it's at least 400 words long. Now here's what you can do: you can strip that down. You can strip that 400 words down and get multiple Facebook posts. Uh, so you get multiple Facebook posts. Uh, you can further strip that down and you can get multiple tweets. So by putting in the effort to really sit down and create a blog post, you know, you are able to update your whole social media strategy again, just by boiling out the salient points on whatever you're talking about in your blog post. And again, this further tops off your personal brand expertise. Remember, right? People, people not only search for homes online. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, that's the first thing they do when they want to you know, buy or sell their house. But they also, you know, if they come across you and they should come across you. Right. Again, imagine you're that downtown condo expert and you have all this content around downtown condos and I want to buy a downtown condo. I'm going to Google that. I'm going to search for those terms, uh, downtown condo San Diego. And, uh, you know, in addition to finding, you know, the stuff that the big uh, portals like Zillow and Truly a Redfin are are, going to put out there, uh, you know, I want to find your stuff. And the only way I'm going to find your stuff is if you put it out there and you and you put it out there you know, in that format in terms of uh, of branding yourself around downtown condo expert okay so again if you do all this stuff right i find you i see your blog i'm like hey toby's doing a pretty good job he looks like a pretty knowledgeable guy right then i'm going to google toby salgado and then i find his facebook stuff and and then I, i see that he's active on facebook i see that people are following him uh and then i'll obviously i'm going to see his twitter and then finally i'm going to get to his linkedin and then the next step after i do all that stuff i'm going to go hey toby's my guy i'm going to get a downtown condo and uh, he is going to uh, sell mine or he's going to go find one for me. All right. That's great. Building your personal brand, your expertise, your knowledge. And, you know, you're updating your social media strategy. Beautiful. What about getting leads? Right. Because I got to get those leads. I got to get you to my to, to, to see my blog post. I got to get you to my Facebook page, my Twitter account, my LinkedIn page. And then I need you to call me. OK, how can a blog get you to call me. I'll tell you. Uh, but let me share some results from uh, one other guy. Now, this guy, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to have this guy on the show. His name, his, his name is Jay Thompson. And he's, uh, he's, he's at Zillow right now. I wanted to get Spencer Raskoff on the show, right? the CEO of Zillow. And because they're public or whatever, I just couldn't get that guy on. <clears throat> so they offered me up Jay a long time ago, and I turned him down. But I, I might have him on the show. Uh, so anyhow, so Jay Thompson, the guys at Zillow. Now, before that, 
uh, he had a blog. Now, that blog is still up. It is called uh, Phoenix Real Estate Guy, and I, I'm going to link to it in the notes show. Um, now, it is a super, super popular blog. Now, I've been to it. I don't, I don't really see what's magical about it because um, uh, maybe I just haven't, I haven't really dug into it. Um, but so it's, he's got a super popular blog. Now, here's what Jay says about lead generation. Now, <clears throat> every month he, he gets leads that are in the thousands, right? Thousands of leads every month. How about, would you like that? What about hundreds? I'm sure you, you would love 10, you know, or what, what if you got two a week, two high quality leads a week, people that have been listening to you, they've been reading your words. They're getting a sense of your personality from your blog. And then they reach out to you like done, right? Like done deal. If you can, if, if people are just like you guys are listening to me, you guys get a sense of who I am. You guys know what makes me tick because I, I talk about, you know, I throw some, some of my personal self into each of these podcast episodes. So, you know, when people call me and I, I, I chat with them or we trade emails, you know, I mean, look, it's, it's people feel go, you know, they go, man, I feel like I kind of know you, Toby. And that's cool. Right. So, again, if you had a blog and you updated it. And uh, and you, you know, through that same kind of, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to talk to you about the first time home buyer, but let me tell you about my, you know, let me tell you about my first time home purchase. Again, you're forming a personal relationship with these people. And, and I will tell you that the next step up is uh, is you guys doing a podcast. And if you could do a podcast, if you could be the downtown condo expert and do a podcast or look, beachfront homes or, you know, waterfront property or desert property, whatever it is, <clears throat> mountain co- uh, ba- mountain cabins, um, uh, and, you, and you talked about what's going on, you know, I mean, look, this is a radio show. What can you say on the radio? You can talk about personal finance. Uh, you know, again, it's all... Uh, consumer based stuff. Right. And that's the that's a brilliance of a blog or a podcast. You sell real estate. But your market is a consumer. Somebody's going to consume that they're going to be your client and everybody has the same issues. Right. So we all are concerned about personal finance. We're all are concerned about the economy. We're all concerned. Uh, you know, we want to know what the best, you know, for want, you know, whatever. We're humans that are living in America, we all experience and have the same thing. So there's so much stuff you can, it, when you don't know what to write about or you don't know what to talk about on your blog, there's lots of things that you can talk about. All right, so <clears throat> moving on, I kind of got off the track there for a second. So going back to Jay. So Jay got thousands of leads every month. Now, I don't know if he still, I don't know if he sold the blog. I don't know, I don't know if he still does that or not, but I know that he did. He put that in print. I read that. Um, uh, he didn't tell me that personally. I read that. <clears throat> he also says in this article that I found, he said that 80% of his business came directly from his blog. All right, 80%. That's, inc- that's in crazy. Uh, it, it, I, I just, I just combined incredible and crazy. I said in crazy. Uh, <clears throat> that's incredible. Um, and so look, here's the kicker. The kicker is this, that he's gotten deals from blog posts that he's written three and four years ago. And I have to tell you, I don't know. I thought about this for a little while. I don't know what other kind of medium will yield those kinds of results, right? What, what other kind of advertising that you can put out there that will get you deals from stuff that you did three years ago? You can't, it's not a magazine, right? Nobody's going to pick up a three-year-old magazine. Um, nobody's going to look at a three-year-old, you know, anything, but a blog, uh, People will. And look, this my podcast, my, this podcast, it's 2014 right now. Um, people are going to be listening to this thing in 2018. Um, so, so yeah. So, again, that's another reason why you should take the time out and start your blog and keep it up to date. Here's the other thing, right? It's free, right? It's kind of like, you know, uh, my coaching clients, I tell them to go out. Oh, by the way, by the way, um, a spot just opened up. Uh, so if you, I have one more spot. Um, my buddy, Jeff, uh, he's kind of moved on from me. Well, he's had some stuff happen, but, uh, anyhow, um, uh, he's had some changes in his, his, uh, where he works. So, um, 
If you are looking to level up and get some coaching, uh, reach out to me and uh, let's see if we're a fit. All right. So, um, so much like, right. So the point that I was getting at is this people have a farm. I encourage people to have a farm. I encourage people to be out in their farm and especially for the new ish agent where you can't afford other types of, uh, of marketing, you know, having a farm and door knocking, uh, it works and it's free. All it does, it takes your time. That's it. Same thing like a blog. All, you know, it, it's, it works and it's free. All it does, take your time. Now, it's almost free, right? So, so here, here's what I would suggest. Um, on your website, on your real estate website, you should have a tab that says blog. Okay. And create your blogs and updating there. Then you should also have your custom blog, right? <clears throat> you should go to GoDaddy, get a u- unique domain name, you know, Toby's real estate blog, uh, downtown condo, San Diego expert, down uh, San Diego condo expert, whatever it is. Um, go get your a unique domain name and double post your content. Now, some other bloggers out there uh, might say that's a big no-no. <clears throat> and uh, look, if if double posting your content, even though it's, you know it's my content, I'm not ripping it off from someone else. So I think it's totally fine, and you're you're to to overutilize or or multi-purpose that content for both my business blog and my personal blog. I don't see a problem. I don't think Google will will ding you. So listen, I knew I was going to do this this uh, this post. Uh, so I went to GoDaddy and I cut a deal with those guys. And here's what I got you. So you can get a free domain name and uh, hosting for your new custom blog for three dollars and forty nine cents, three fifty a month. Um, so again, for three fifty a month, right, less than forty bucks a year, you can you can have get your custom domain name for free and get it hosted. If you want that. You can just go to superagentslive.com slash GoDaddy deal. And by the way, it's also going to be on the show notes. So if you forget that, just go to the show notes. All right. So how else will a blog help you? What can I do to convince you that you should put time into your blog? All right. You can use it to grow your list, right? So we're, we're always trying to grow our list. We're always trying to grow our sphere. Somebody that, that we can put on our, our, in our database and send them out whatever stuff we want to send them out. Um, uh, so on your blog and on your website, you have to, if you want to grow your list, right, you have to provide a call to action. You have to ask them to do something. Um, and, you know, uh, look, here's a call to action. Here's what I do on Super Agents Live. Super Agents Live, you go to Super Agents Live. I wrote a little ebook and it's like, uh, it's like, I don't know what it is. Forget the title. It's like 11 tips, 11, 11 super agent tips or whatever. Um, and I get, uh, just so you know, right. So I started off a few months ago with zero list and, and started, and I have about a thousand people on that list. Um, so a thousand people have downloaded my book. Well, you know, it's, it's only eight pages, but can you do that? Sure. You can, you know, uh, go write a little ebook, you know, again, financing your new home or first time home buyer tips, whatever, put it out there. Uh, and, uh, you, you're going to give the book away for free, but the cost, right? You, what you're going to ask them to do, what the, the ask them to pay is, uh, their email address. So now you're building your list. <clears throat> That's another thing you can do. What else can you do to begin grabbing leads from your blog? Um, so, you know, one thing you can do, <clears throat> and there is lots of things you can do with this. You can jack in an IDX feed. And, you know, you can start servicing some homes in, in relevant areas. Then there's, look, there's a lots of things you can do with that IDX feed. And I'm not, it's, it's so many that I'm not going to even get into it here. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, look, there's lots of ways you can make your blog sticky, right? To make it relevant, to build your brand and position yourself as an expert in your little niche. So, <clears throat> look, guys, I know this stuff is not sexy and uh, this kind of uh, content can even feel dull at times. But these things, building your list, establishing yourself as an expert, uh, you know, these are all cornerstones to you building a successful and long lasting business. <laughs> hey, man, thanks for sticking with me on this one. And to be totally honest, uh, I got a little bored with this content, um, but I felt like sh- I should talk to you, you know, spend a little time talking about it. So, 
Hopefully you were not bored. Hopefully that uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully that you you know you came away understanding that uh, a blog is a is a tool that you guys should be using. All right. We are back again with Greg's Gold updates with Greg. Uh, Greg, you did a great episode last week talking about open houses um, and uh, how to phrase certain things so you don't, you know, so you, you don't, so you have the best chance of working with people. Today's episode, I think, or a segment is a little bit on that, right? It is. It's going to be, we're, so we, we've engaged with them now that they like us, we like them, we're working together, the trust is built, now they're clients, right? Okay. I'm going to go over seven different phrases that we need to avoid that we all actually use. I, I, before I started researching this stuff, man, I was using these same phrases. I started learning the differences. I was beta testing on clients. The, the reactions were, were, were staggering. So yeah, yeah there's seven different phrases to avoid. Yeah, I, listen, I can't wait to, to, to hear that. And you know, one thing that I have in my, my lexicon or my vernacular is I say guys for everybody. You know, guys, girl, what I, and I just say guys. And I'm really trying to, to get that out of my you know, the way I talk. Cause I, cause I, I know, do the same thing. Yeah. So that's just we, a word. We, we both, we both mean both genders, everybody yeah. involved, the whole shebang. Yeah. Everybody, all you people. All right. So, so yeah, let's get into the seven. Okay. So phrase one uh, is here's a problem or here, here's the problem. I might say, you know, clients don't really want to hear about a problem associated with buying or selling their home. They, they just don't. They'd rather just, you know, hear about you solving it because real estate agents, that's what we do. We're hired to solve problems. You have a house, we need to sell it. You find a way to sell it, right? Yeah. So instead of saying, you know, here's the problem, you know, you can use words such as like a, a challenge or opportunity. So it, it could sound something like this. Here's our challenge. You know, we need to fix up the house on a small budget, and then we can talk about where we can start, you know, on maybe marketing and remarketing and again or whatever else. So we, we, we typically use, you know, opportunity. So here's the opportunity that, we, that we're going to be facing today, guys. We have the opportunity to go in there and really put some new fresh paint into this house and put some new carpet and give it some new life so the buyers will come in and fall in love with it. Do you agree that's a good opportunity? You know, that opportunity is, 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 for me is better than challenge. Challenge then is there, therefore, again, the more of a uh, well, challenging word. It presents a problem. And I want to eliminate in the, that in the client's eyes. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm just, I, I, I totally agree. And as I'm thinking about what you said here, you know, um, use opportunity. Do you follow that up with, uh, uh, with the benefit, hey, here's the opportunity. We have an opportunity right now to put new paint on, and the benefit is, or yeah, do you we're, just go? We're, we're gonna have more people fall in love with it. We all know that you know buyers, you know, buy with their hearts and then confirm it with their minds. So let's let's have Mrs. By we all know Mrs. Buyer is the one really driving the ship here. I mean, let's be honest. If she comes in and it smells like mold and the paint has you know, got you know someone's decided to drag markers all the way down the walls because they didn't want to leave their house or whatnot, or just lack of cleanliness. You know, imagine if you go down to Kelly Moore or Home Depot or Ace or whatever, and you grab a couple cans of paint, you slap them up on the walls, it's got that new fresh paint smell, it's going to have that new carpet in there. It's not, it's not expensive, but it is effective. So, yeah, absolutely. You say, you know, here's the opportunity. We're going to have a lot more folks, you know, in my opinion, fall in love with the property because, you know, we, we need to get more, more bodies in here. And if we can say, look, new paint and new carpet, a lot of people are going to say, oh, my gosh, okay, two things I don't need to do anymore. Well, let's go look at this house. Or if the buyers are right on that edge, like we talked about last week, they're right on that edge on pricing. Yeah. Well, now they don't have to spend that extra money. Is it? Uh, I mean, this, right. OK, so we're talking about phrases, but I want to I want to move into a different sort of territory here. Um, is it let's say that the, the, the property definitely needs new carpet and it definitely needs paint. I mean, every house can use a you know, a, a tune up on the paint side of it. Are you better off? Uh, f as a seller to, to, should you do the work and spend that $5,000 or leave the property as is and, and, and offer a $5,000 credit for the new buyers so that double they can choose uh, what, double, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I see So they can choose what they want to put yeah. in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a double, double edged sword. Okay. Um, because you know, it, it, you want to price it out and see if the juice is worth the squeeze. If the, if the budget allows it, and the market allows it, you know, we would say go in and, and go in and get the work done. Actually, you know, what? I got a great example for you. Okay, so in our marketplace, it's a little bit on the higher end side, and we had a, um, a, a property came on the market for 2500000 
nice house, one of the best streets in all of this, you know, in the city that we work in, um, it, you know, all, it has everything you need, but our seller was unwilling to do small things. You know, things such as like the carpet between the kitchen and the family room was fraying at the seam there. And it was noticeable. I mean, I, I walked in like, oh, what the heck's wrong with the carpet? And why, why, why is there no, there's no, there's no, there's no pizzazz. There's nothing, there's nothing wowing me about this property. It's very vanilla. And so we went on the market. We didn't get any response, you know, and so she's ticked off. Well, last week we went on and brought another property on for 2350000 dollars and we had a, a stager go in and we repainted this thing from head to toe. We did, you know, a little work here and there. We, we, we made it shine, right? Well, when you walked into these two different homes and they're both comparable locations in a whole nine, um, one of them, you could definitely see a visible difference and the public's re response was beyond good. Um, the seller of our first house that did not do the work went over, she met the, the stager and instantly hired him on the spot. And we're going to go put a, a significant amount of money into her place to help her bring it up to stuff. So it, it, it's a double edged sword. I mean, if the seller doesn't have the money, you don't do the work. You just sell it for a lower price. If they have the money and you know, they can justify the cost and goes above what they put into it. Then yeah, absolutely go do it. Got it. Okay. So <clears throat> we're a little bit off topic, but, as yeah, a, we took a hard left. We did. Sorry, that's the, <laughs> the show does that. But so, as a as a, a listing person, a listing agent, when should I have that conversation? Uh, Up front, right in the very beginning, when you, after you get that listing appointment and you get the document signed, you're just walking around what you need to get done. This is where we take the gloves off and it's bare knuckle fighting. I mean, you, you don't sit there and coddle them and say, "Well, you know what? I think you're right, Mister or Mrs. Seller. You, I don't think we need to do any, do anything." When inside your head you're going, "Oh my God, this thing we're screwed." Got it. So get no. get it signed, get it signed, and now you guys are get partners. And okay, all right. So Be listen. Honest. Um. So. Uh, uh, use opportunity instead of challenge what's number two okay so phrase two is i'll try you know this this no. this, this phrase is just chuck full of doubt you know it, it gives the impression that you're already you know kind of not really going to give it your 100 percent. you know instead i instead of using i'll try you know we what we use is uh, we say i will so you know instead of, well i'll try to get that done I will get that done. Yes. And then you just make it happen because you're a man and woman of your word, right? Right. So instead of like, well, we're going to sort of kind of try to do this. No. Remember, you are hired as a problem solver. Problem solvers don't try to get it done. They just get it done. Right. So I will do this. So that, that's, that's, that's phrase three here. Okay. Um, phrase, uh, sorry, that's phrase, that's two. phrase three. Yeah. So phrase three is but. Um, this is a interesting word because we all use it in our in our daily conversations. This uh, this word is often um, and I can't in disguise. You know, you never have those conversations like yeah 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 yeah. You know, we should probably totally go get lunch, but <laughs> yeah, you're like yeah, yeah we're never gonna go get that lunch. So instead of doing that, I would I would use the word and. So it would kind of work like this. Um, I will market your property um, at this price for four weeks, and if we don't receive any offers, I'll go. Um, I'll go, and we'll ask for a price adjustment. Is that fair? Got it. It's not the, it's not the doubt, and they're going. Well, you know, I, I don't think we're going to do it. I can't see how we're going to actually get this price at this. You know, you know it, 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 where we are in the marketplace. So re replace, um, but with and. You uh, so so. Uh Say those two sentences back to back, using but and then use and. Okay. I will market your property at this price for four weeks, but if we don't receive any offers, uh, I'll go back to you and we'll ask for a price adjustment. Then uh, here's the replacing it with and. I will market your property at this price for four weeks, and if we don't receive any offers, I'll come back to you and we'll ask for a price adjustment. Got it. Got it. <clears throat> but, Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I'm not um, I, I I I don't know that I'm grasping the full value of that. I mean, I, I, I so you're saying that if I use but but is often disguised as can't. Um, mm -hmm. OK, you, you, you know what? It's all about the presentation, it's how you present it to the people. So let's say someone has a very, very soft personality and anything that they say is like liquid gold. 
it's not really going to matter what comes out of their mouth. It's the fact that the, pe- the trust is built there, right? Yeah. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take any kind of doubt out of the seller's minds or the buyer's minds that you can't get it done or anything else. You just want to give them the reassurance in your verbiage that there's no doubt in your mind that this is going to take place. Got and it. you're 100% confident and you hire, they hire the right person. That's all, that's all that we're trying to do. You know, I used to have a guy, I used to, uh, at this other company that I used to work with, I used to, we would all have these meetings and um, I, there's this one guy, this NBA guy that I always end up sparring with and here, here's what he would do. Um, you can either say, I can say, hey, the sky is blue and you can say, I agree, right? How he would answer it was, I'd say the sky is blue. He'd say, I don't disagree. He's saying don't and disagree, even though he's saying I agree. And that crap would throw me all the time. And, I, and, and it, it, that is some kind of sales tactic somewhere. I don't exactly know. I use it sometimes to confuse people. But um, mm-hmm. to be in agreement, instead of saying I agree, I'd say I don't disagree. I'm, uh, I don't know how that ties into Canton, but okay, but let's move on. I don't know. But it, <laughs> let's move it on. comes down to verbiage again. You're yeah. sitting there going, wait, 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 wait what, 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 what did you say? Right. Are, you, are you on my side or are you not on my right. side? What, what's right, going right, on? right. Um, okay, so here, here's one that we all use in both personal and professional lives, and it can cause major problems. And the phrase number four is, you should. Mm. Now, this thing is, you know, it's, it, it, this is a marriage killer, and this is a sales killer, man. Yes. You know, deep, deep down, uh, you want to say this to your, to your sellers or buyers, you know, you should paint the exterior and remove all those, you know, dead shrubs and dead grass and stuff. You know, instead of, instead of actually saying you should do this, um, you want to create an, a, a sense of empowerment. So take out, you should, and you turn it into a, a more of a team comment. So that we're like, we're working on the same team. We've kind of run like this. If we paint the exterior of the house and work on a bit of the landscaping, we'll, have a better position to increase the asking price. It's very much, you know, it's not, we are now not, we're not pointing any fingers, but we are now a team on this and we're going to work together on it. So you're solidifying your relationship with the seller. You're bringing them into the fold and you're making it a joint decision. It's very powerful. I, I, we, I, I use this and it is very powerful. You know, as soon as we pick up a listing, it, it, it there's no longer I and you, it's yeah, we, we, we right now i love that you know you know when you use we we're all on the same team i think that i would i would struggle with that i think it, i would i can certainly use we but i think i i would say we should think about you know yeah. um if we, we if we paint okay all right i love that okay so just some fun stuff man and it's um it gives a sense that there's a bigger presence behind you if you're a single agent. You know, you can say, hey, you know what? We're, we're going to be working on this hard for you. It will. Right. All, okay, there's a bunch of you now. Yeah. Awesome. I got more people. I got, you know, paying the same price and I got a whole crew. This couldn't get much better. I use okay. that one also. So, yeah. So, phrase five um, you have to. As in, uh, you have to list this price, uh, you know, list the home at this price to get any activity. You know, phrases like this often, you know, they, they make people pretty upset, you know, simply put, because it's really kind of taking away their sense of control. Um, you know, you have to do this, which is when you're talking to your kid. Look, Johnny, you have to do blah, 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 blah. Well, he's going, well, I, I, what if I don't want to do this? So it's the same instance in business. So you can change it and say, um, you can position, you can position this property anywhere you want in the market uh, that fits your needs, but remembering that homes sell faster at one price compared to another. So you're, you're giving them the latitude or the enough rope to go hang themselves if they want to. And sometimes you have to do it to sellers. You, you have to go out there and say, look, all right, fine. You, you, want, you, you, you are the ultimate boss. You hired me. I work for you. We can list this at any, at any price that you want, but you know, what we're seeing is the fact that, you know, homes in this marketplace are selling at this price point. But, yeah, absolutely. Let's go out there and try it. You just said but twice. I did, but <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I should probably watch my butts. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, phrase six. It's not my fault. 
this is a, a, a quiet killer, as I, you know, we, I kind of like to say, um, because it, when you say it's not my fault, even if you don't say it's not my fault, like when the seller or buyer is just beating you down for something and you're thinking going, dude, this is not my fault. It's not my fault. You wouldn't step up to the plate and do, you know, either do the work that's needed or come up with a price that we need to do. You know, it's just, it's just not the way that it, that it works. You, this is where you just need to step up and be the man or the woman that you are of integrity. And since you are the CEO of your business, you need to have the phrase of, I take complete control of every, you know, of, of anything that happens in my industry or in my business. So, you know what, you know, Toby, you, you didn't step up, you, you know, you didn't get us the house that we wanted to get. And you're thinking, Greg, you've lost your marbles. You guys came in 50,000 under asking, you know, with all kinds of different contingencies and they have to sell a house. What are you talking about? I didn't, this is my fault. Right. But you know what? What agents need to do is not pass the buck onto the client. They didn't say, you know what? Absolutely. We are going to do better on the next one. I take complete, you know, I take complete, um, uh, uh, not control. Responsibility. I'm looking for. Thank you. Responsibility for this. I will. What can I do better to help you? How can I better serve you in this next opportunity? You know, because it gives them the, the, the sense of, you know, they're in control still, but you could cancel the relationship anytime if they become too much of a headache. But yeah. it just, it, again, it goes back to not, not making them look stupid because yeah. they know that they didn't step it up. They know they didn't do it. No, no, don't need to rub it in their face. Right. Hey, Greg, I take full responsibility for not for not finding a house or getting it sold. I didn't do a good enough job uncovering what you are really looking for. Let's let's sit down and uh, and and tell me, explain to me again what you really want to achieve out of this transaction. Well, yeah, yeah that's what I've been talking about, Toby. And well, I'm really happy you said that. You know, okay, and absolutely. You know what? We'll, we'll, I'll get my wife on the phone tonight after work, and we'll all sit down and we'll have a conference call. I, I like that idea. Right. Okay. Now he's the man. You're the agent. Everybody wins. Right. And we're in your head going, I got to train these fools. Right. You know. Get, to get get these clowns on board with us, you know, so they actually see what's going on. It takes a couple of times if they lose out enough houses, all of a sudden you become, you know, you know, you're walking on water when you talk because you're like, hey, guys, you know, what I suggested in the past, you know, we might want to step up and do this again now. Right. And they'll listen to you. Okay. Um, okay. So here we go. Uh, the se- uh, phrase seven, you know, the final one here is no problem. It sounds harmless, right? Uh, but mm, slow down there. This is actually one of those problems that when you say no, it, there's no problem, it implies um, that the, re- the request can be, it could have been a problem in the past. So what we do is, is we don't ever say, oh, hey, no, no problem at all. I say, hey, no, it's my pleasure to get that for you. Or it's my pleasure to work on that. Or it's, you know, I just replace my no problem with my pleasure. Because again, you get to go out this whole industry with a servant's heart, right? So yeah. a, a servant's heart's going to say, you know, it'd be my pleasure to work, work on that. It would be my pleasure to get this information for you. Even if you really don't want to, it doesn't really matter. This is the business we're all in. And we, this is a service, servant-based business, and we need to come across in our verbiage, in our attire, in our attitude, and in everything else in, our, in, in how we present ourselves as be willing to you know, do what it takes for our clients to serve them with our utmost and best abilities. Do you agree? Right. Yeah, I do. I do. Actually, the uh, my father, um, he has a saying that well, we we did not make this one up. This is the Ritz Carlton's uh, saying um, for their employees. It says, "We are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen." And when you start thinking about it that way, you know the biggest Yahoo that's that's in your client list right now. You know what? Just treat them as a lady and a gentleman. They will reciprocate right with appropriate action. Right, I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. So, yeah, those, are, those are the small little tweaks, man, but they, they'll make a big difference. Right. I mean, look, I, I, yeah, the, the last one, I don't want to dig into it, but the last one, uh, I got to put some thought into it, right? Saying my, was my pleasure instead of no problem. I, I, I tend to say no problem, all, no, no problem, no sweat. I'm on it. Um, uh, I got to think about how that would actually imply that there, it could have been a problem, but, but look, it, either way, it sounds much, much, but Hey, can you get me that Greg or Toby? My pleasure. It's, it's, uh, I love It'd be a pleasure to get that. silky. Absolutely. Yeah. My pleasure. Silky Greg golden nuggets as usual. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, 18 minutes my again. Pleasure, man. Look, <laughs> we, I, we went over. Huh? We went over hey, again. You know what? 
Go ahead. That's okay. It's good value, man. And and I'm so excited to bring this bring this to folks. You know, I'm I'm always here to serve as I, as I say every single time when I sign off with you guys. But I truly mean it. And anyone who reaches out to me absolutely knows that. I'll call you back within minutes of getting the email if I'm not in another appointment, and we'll talk until you have a you know have a clear answer of what you need. So. I'm pumped, man. I'm so honored to be here. I know. Look, here's what I feel bad. I mean, you're out there. You're killing it in real estate. You know, you have a thriving coaching business and uh, and, you know, you, you could have made a, a couple grand spending it somewhere else. So I'm glad you came on the show and spent it with me, spent it with the audience. Hopefully everybody did uh, get some nuggets out of this and they can they can implement some of these small tweaks in their businesses today. Greg, I look forward to talking to you next week. Can't wait, Toby. Thanks so much. You guys it has been a pleasure speaking with you. Talk to you next week. My man. Concentrated power